known to some as Coach B, welcome tonight for our live broadcast, Monday, May 13th. What a show! You may have heard me say that before, but listen, active and passive verbs and how to get kids to move from passive to active verbs, one of the toughest things, not just in the elementary school curriculum, but all the way up to college, writing those active verbs is the cornerstone of strong writing. Here we go. First off, don't eat or sleep until you buy our book, Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids. You can get it at Amazon.com. And as a special order, offer to our webcast audience, every book that you buy will come complete with a jazzy back cover. Yes, my friends, here's tonight's show. What is a verb? Program 554. These are our common core lessons. We're focusing on concepts fundamental to Common Core, heavy emphasis on writing. And the cool thing about these programs is, my friends, when you order the PDF, you just put it in your computer and I'll teach your class for you. Every single one of these programs follows a five-step lesson plan. We start with a question, what is a verb? Here's our answer. A verb can be active, or passive. Active verbs show action. Passive verbs don't show action. See, arms crossed, passive, arms moving, that's active. Then at step three, we'll give some examples of active and passive verbs. Step four, use our quick test. Step five, write a five paragraph college essay using active verbs. Oh, sweet mama. What an evening we've got tonight. Here's what your kids need to know. In order to use this program, they need to know class yes, hands and eyes, mirror words, the scoreboard, and teach okay. But if they don't know that stuff, get WBT introduction in the Common Core section of free ebooks at wholebrainteaching.com. I'll say that again. Download WBT introduction. The Common Core section of free ebooks at wholebrainteaching.com, and I'll teach them class yes, hands and eyes, mirror words, scoreboard, and teach okay. All right, let's jump right into our lesson. We start with the question. So if you're using these in class, you just read the yellow boxes. Welcome, I'm Coach B, your college professor. Rub your hands together and tell your neighbor. Oh, sweet mama, I'm going to love going to Whole Brain College. That gets them excited. Then you say, class, class, they're not fast enough. Mighty groan. See, I'm marking the scoreboard for you. Not loud enough. Mighty groan. They give another one. Then, mighty oh yeah, and mighty oh yeah. And you're ready to get their attention again. Class, class. Now, very exciting day in Whole Brain College. Oh, so exciting. We even give you in these programs directions. Make a full turn to your neighbor, use big gestures, and repeat what I said over and over. The stuff in brackets is what you do. You don't say clap, clap. You clap twice and say teach. That is our think, pair, share. All right, here's our question, as promised. And when you see boldface, that will remind you, that will remind you words to emphasize. What is a verb? What is a verb? Use vocal variety, keep them awake. My first big point of the night, my friends, it's so big, I take off my glasses. Here's what I say to you. Teaching is a performing art. Stop portraying yourself. They will get tired of you. Here's some suggestions. Do a cowboy version. All right, my friends. We're going to answer a big, important question. Yeehaw. 
Or do a clown version. All right, my friends. Or do a zombie version. All right, my friends. Play different roles, not too many. Once in a while, pull a, an alternate personality out of your back pocket. It keeps them engaged. All right, we have our question. What is the class yes? I mean, what is a verb? And now, let's go to an answer. Classity class. That's what Coach B says. Here we go. I'm going to my 3D display. That's hard to do and kind of gives me a kink in the back, but anything for my dear online audience. Not loud enough, mighty groan. Super mighty oh yeah. Call him back. Class a doodle do. Now here's the definition. And this is why it's good to be online. A verb can be active or passive. Notice we've changed our definition of verbs. It used to be a verb is an action word. Well, we did that for simplicity. Also because we weren't sure how to define the complexity of active and passive verbs. A verb can be active or passive. Active verbs show action. Passive verbs don't show action. I'm taking my glasses off, and if I had my hat on, I'd fling it across the room. Listen to me, my friends. I'm so mad. I'm angry. We define passive verbs as showing a state of being. What does that mean? I taught philosophy for 40 years, and being is one of the most complex words in the Western philosophical tradition. We say a passive verb shows a state of being. I am, he is, they were. How is that a state of being? I think a half-hour lecture, I could straighten that out. Don't use that definition. Just say active verbs show action. Passive verbs don't show action. And I'll expand that as we go on. Is everybody on board with that? I'm going to ask my online audience. Do you agree we have to change the definition of passive verbs and leave out state of being, which means mumble, mumble, gargle, mumble to our kids? Yes, Risa. Yes, Geo Jerry. Thank you. Everybody, it is confusing, isn't it, Cruz? Much simpler. And you know what? We like simple. Now, class kablooey, I repeat the definition again. And class, class, class. Now we're ready to explore our answer. And here's where the goodies start. I have a confession to make, my friends, a deep confession. Active and passive verbs have puzzled me for such a long time because of the problem with state of being. But once I jumped in and said, all right, forget state of being. It's just passive verbs don't show action. I began to make some progress. We have some seriously beautiful scaffolding tonight to move kids from passive verbs to active verbs, which is the whole point of this distinction. I'm taking the glasses off again. The point is not to learn grammar about active and passive verbs. The point is to write active verbs. I am hot. That's passive. My brain's flying. That's active. The food is good. The food tastes like liquid heaven. Tastes. That's active. We love the active verbs. Can I get a thumbs up on active verbs? Yes. Now, here's our big mistake, 
we do too much at a time. So I just go with I eat, eat is an action, eat is an active verb. Then I'm going to go I swim, swim is an action, swim is an active verb. Now I run, run is an action, run is an active verb. Here's the way we usually present it, and here's a gesture for, does everyone know the gesture for traditional education? Sarah Metter, do you know the gesture for traditional ed education? Pine Triella Cruz, do you know the gesture for traditional education? Yes, Apple Pilot, that's the gesture for traditional education. In traditional education, we'd say, now, swim is an active verb, and eat is an active verb, and run is an active verb, blah, 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 blah. One example, teach okay. Another example, teach okay. Another example, teach okay. Scaffold in small steps. <laughs> I'm taking the glasses off again. The smaller the rungs on the ladder, the higher our kids can climb. Scaffold. Baby steps, little teeny steps. I mean, take them a long way. You'll see we're going a long way tonight. Now, here's, we're, we're now to our sentence frames. Using only one word, turn to your neighbors. Use big gestures to show your superhero actions and fill in the blank with as many different active verbs as you can. I blank. Here's another. We blank. Let's just try it out. All right, my friends, online. Active verbs, we blank. Go. Active verbs. We walk, we talk, we slurped, we fly, we sing, we eat, we stroll. Outstanding. We saunter. Newport Jonesy. Love the vocabulary. Excellent job. All right, how about this one? He blank. Give me some he blank active verbs. Go online. He grins. He roars. He thinks. He sang. He growled. He snickers. He shops. <laughs> Sash. That's a good one. All right. So a little bit of scaffolding, and now the girl blank and the octopus blank. More active verbs. You've got to do two at a time now. Go ahead, my friends. Mama Roos, let's keep it clean. Swims and watches. Swims and sleeps. Swims and giggles. Snorkeled and slithered. Dives and observes. Great job. So you see we're building, and now we're going to go for three. The girls blank, the boys blank, and they all blank. Excellent job. Now, call the kids back. Let's go back to our definition. A verb can be active or passive. Active verbs show action. Passive verbs don't show action. And you're going to make the gestures. Hey, class, ho, class. I borrowed that from Lindsay Rausch. So now we summarize words like eat, swim, and run, show action. These are active verbs. Really pound it into their head. And get them to say it to their neighbors. Now let's explore passive verbs. They're easy. They don't show action. Here's some of the most common passive verbs. Am, are, is, was, were. Now from here forward, your teacher will occasionally in insert a class, yes, the scoreboard in other directions, however she wishes. So I leave this open to you. Now here we go. Check it out. Tune in. Passive, I am happy. Active, I smile all day. Side-by-side -side contrast makes it clear the difference between the two. Here's another one. He is friendly. 
He hugs everyone. Side-by-side -side contrast. Clear the difference between the two. We are sweet. We snuggle with you. Anybody dig the snuggle? Anybody dig the snuggle? I want you to come up with your own passive and active verbs. Ready, go. Now, the problem with passive and active verbs is to stay on the same topic. You are nice. You lend me your pencil. I am happy. I sizzle with excitement on Monday nights. He's lovable. He cuddles with you. Excellent, excellent job. You know what? You know what? You guys are so good. You might think about teaching as a career. I mean, you're just coming up with these active and passive verbs. Good job. I was wacky. I skated off a roof. Can you dig that? You see, Coach B is not... I'll tell you this again. I'm really not for nicey-nice, you know? Where do we find out in grammar school that a kid might skate off a roof? You know, if a kid reads that sentence, that doesn't mean he's going to go home and skate off a roof. You know what I'm saying? I was wacky. Let's use some language with punch in it. Anybody for juicy language or does that just scare you? Kate, good to have you online. Here's our next one. The clown is strange. The clown eats bugs. That's strange. We're having funtricity here as... Marlin, West Virginia, points out, they were at the beach. They surfed all day. Lots of examples of active and passive. So remember, active verbs like smile, hug, snuggle, skate, eat, and surf show action. Passive verbs like am, is, are, was, and were don't show action. Here we go. Let them write some active and some passive sentences. More examples. You can't have too many. I'm happy. I was tired. She is cool. I laugh all the time. I slept all day. She flies her own plane. That's cool. Now, here we go. Pay attention. Huge point coming. Did I get your attention? Is everybody ready for the huge point? Kate, you're going to love this huge point. And you're going to love the trick here. Passive verbs often make your writing weak. We call them baby talk. Active verbs make your writing strong. We call them college talk. Try not to use baby talk verbs. Use college talk verbs. See, now that's as far as you might go in traditional education. Don't use passive verbs, use active ones. And the teacher says that, and they still get wads of passive verbs. The trick is to get kids to climb up in baby steps from passive to active. 
to give them lots of reps in passive active, passive active, passive active, but in baby, baby, baby steps. Does everybody see why I'm so excited tonight? Because if we can make that move from passive to active, we've moved writing up a grade level, if not two grade levels. I'll say that again. If you can increase the number of active verbs in student writing and reduce to a minimum, we've got to use them, passive verbs, that writing moves up to grade levels. I have absolutely no scientific evidence for that, but that doesn't keep me from taking off my glasses and saying, I believe it's true. Glasses back on. Check it out. Now, here's the goodie. Here's the goodie, my friends. You'll see that using active verbs will be easier if you use because. When you say because, clap your hands once to show the importance of this wonderful word. You know the because clapper, but you've never seen it with active and passive verbs. Here's the because clapper gloves. I'll demonstrate because. When kids say because, I like whole brain teaching because it's fun. Everything after because is a reason is evidence. Before because is a statement that's being supported. So the single word because makes a tiny little argument. Claim, evidence. I like whole brain teaching because it's free and fun. Two pieces of evidence there. Now how am I going to work this in with active and passive verbs? I'm challenging you, my friends. You are outstanding teachers. Can you think of an exercise that's going to use because to help kids in a baby step get from a passive to an active verb? Give me a sentence frame. Who's got it? I'm taking a drink. Sentence frame using because to get from passive to active. I hope you can't get it because that's going to spoil the fun. Good try, Sarah. Rob, nice try. Because I'm thirsty. Blank is a passive verb because. Good, Sarah. I am smart because I study hard. Nancy, you're in the ballpark. Check it out. Look at this, my friends. I'm very, very happy with this. Passive. I am good because I feed hungry stray cats. I am good because I put in the active verb. See, give them the demo. I'm good because I feed hungry stray cats. I'm good because I throw in the active verb. Very, very small scaffolding steps. And Nancy, as we expect, Stoltenberg, the desert dynamo, hit it out of the park. I know she's happy, says Riza, because she sings out loud. I am good because I teach the whole brain. You guys are really on top of it, but there's something better coming. We are good because we give money to the poor. We are kind. You know, this is the beauty, this is the beauty of a live show. Make the fix. We're kind because we give money to the poor. We are kind because we active verb. So they got the sample right there. This is the smallest baby step that can be imagined. She is strong because she lifts a thousand pounds. She is strong because she. The professor was smart because she knew everything in the encyclopedia. The professor was smart because she what? Put in the active verb. Classy, wazzy, dozzy. Here we go. Next biggie. Pay. Attention. This is going to be hard. Now, stop here, my friends. The next step 
and we spend a lot of time on passive and active verbs, is hard. It's the hardest thing, I believe, in all of our online lessons. Rub your hands together and tell your online audience, oh, sweet mama, we can do this. It's going to be hard, but we can do it. Here it is. We got this. That's right. All right, here it is. Now watch. So first I give a little pep talk. Remember, this is not whole brain elementary school. This is whole brain college. The following is one of the very hardest challenges you'll ever have in my class. Kids get pumped up when you tell them something's really hard, especially if it's doable. Here it is. Here's the big, giant, wonderful step. Now, let's write a story with active and passive verbs. Give me an, oh, sweet mama, yeah, yeah. The coaches were mean. The soccer players were tired. The sun was hot. Soccer practice is hard. See, that's all passive. And now... We put in the active verbs, an active verb story. Ho, 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 ho. Give them lots of time. They're telling a story, pure active verbs. And then I give them mine. The coaches were mean. The soccer players were tired. The sun was hot. Soccer practice is hard active paragraph. The coaches screamed all practice. The soccer players fainted from exhaustion. The sun fried everyone. Hard soccer practice crushes your spirit. Everybody see the power of that example. Let's use it again. Make a passive story with active options, show them the active options, and then, oh, sweet mama, give it to them again. The party was long. The kids were happy. The games were cool. A birthday party is fun. Come on, my friends. The party was long. Give me an active verb. The party was what? Active. Here we go. Put in an active verb for the party blank. The party lasted until midnight. Good. The party stretched on for days. Good. The party dragged. The party lasted forever. The party lasted eight hours. The party rumbled. The party rocked. The party raged all afternoon. Outstanding. Here's Coach B's. Really knock it out of the park. The party was long. The kids were happy. The games were cool. A birthday party is fun. The party lasted for six months. The kids rolled on the grass laughing. The games earned everyone wads of cash. A birthday party makes a circus seem dull. Can you dig it? Passive story, active story. We do it again. School is difficult. Teachers are strange people. Math is hard. Classes are too long. I'm going to challenge you with teachers are strange people. I got a good active one for that. Give me an active sentence for teachers blank. Color-coded, don't do the red, do the green. Teachers are blank, active verb, I'm taking another drink. Teachers grade papers for fun, that's strange. Teachers love to do lesson plans on their time off, that's strange. Teachers scream all day long. That's strange. 
Teachers dance and gesture like crazy. Teachers stand on their head. Teachers are aliens from Zomberland. Teachers take crazy to a whole new level. Here's my active and passive story. School is difficult. Teachers are strange people. Math is hard. Classes are too long. School makes jumping over the moon look easy. Teachers love weird stuff like seeing kids stand in line. That's weird. We love to see kids stand in line. That's strange. Math explodes your brain and classes last longer than forever. That, my friends, is the core of this new approach to active and passive verbs. Part of this lesson is to emphasize this. You say, passive verbs tell, active verbs show. School is difficult, that tells. School makes jumping over the moon look easy, that shows. Teachers are strange people, that tells. Teachers love weird stuff like seeing kids stand in line, that shows. Talk about telling as opposed to showing. If you're showing, you're active. If you're telling, you might be passive. So now we are to the end of our step three. And we go, of course, to our QT lesson. In the QT lesson, you're going to have kids put their heads down on the desk and ask some true false questions. They're going to put their thumbs up. There are two kinds of verbs, active and passive. Thumbs up. Passive verbs show action. Thumbs down. Run is an active verb. What we're doing here is if you don't know it, head down, true, false questions, thumb up, true, thumb down, false, instant assessment. Who out there is using QT and loving it for instant assessment? That's right. Cruz, what are you doing in green? Is that because you're so active in Philly? You're a red guru, Cruz. Yeah, why am I green? I don't know. All right, good. All right, my friends. Now, can you think of a triple whammy sentence? on verbs that could be developed into a five-paragraph college-style essay. Triple whammy, topic sentence that can be developed into a five-paragraph college-style essay on the subject of verbs. Who's got it? Kate, that you're right. It's a tough one. Kate? I'm glad you think it's tough because you're just going to be happy when I show it to you. Five paragraph essay on verbs, topic sentence, triple whammy. I'm taking a drink while you think about it. What do you got? Ways to run. Nice try, Nancy. Nancy, your winning streak is over. That was a good streak, though, man. You hit that one out of the park. I went to the beach, waxed my board, and surfed all day. Apple Pilot, nice try. I got something cooler. Well, enough of that. Here we go. See if you like this. What we want in these triple whammy essays is First, to get their attention, oh no, here comes a triple whammy essay. Check this out. Active verb essay, use one verb in each blank. I like to blank, blank, and blank. Add a paragraph with at least three sentences about the active verb in the blue blank. Three sentences about the active verb in the green blank. Three sentences about the active verb in the red blank. 
and then finish it up blue, green, and red. It is easy once you get the flow of it. And the color coding is incredible for our kids. There it is. Anybody going anybody gonna to use any of this active passive verb stuff before the end of the year? Who's in for active passive? Tomorrow, says Nancy. Why not sooner, Nancy? Why do you have to wait till tomorrow? Okay, Sarah. Good, Daisy D. Sounds good. All right, my friends. Then they tell their neighbors about active and passive verbs, and we finish up, as always, with a power picks. My friends, if you're not using a power picks, you're working too hard. Everything you teach should be a picture on the wall, and I'm going to make this small so you can see the small writing. Right up here, in little tiny white writing, is what is a verb? A verb can be active or passive. There's the definition. And down here at the bottom is your gesture. You put it on the wall, and you review your power picks daily. That way you don't have to reteach all the time. Who's using power picks? You're digging power picks. Sarah, let's review a little more often, my friend. And now the kids tell each other what a verb is. All right, so if you want a copy of tonight's program, it's program 554. You go to wholebrainteaching.com, which I'm going to go to. Here I am at wholebrainteaching.com. And right here, put in $5.54. I'll send you a copy of the program. And if you want professional development credit or just like to put cool stuff on your wall, I'll send you this elegant certificate that has two sides. Next week, next week, my friends. I know I was excited for this week, but next week is going to be huge. Tell me if you can dig that. What is a complex sentence? Anybody love the problem of teaching what a complex sentence is? Yeah. We're going to teach complex sentences next week. The technical definition of a complex sentence is an independent clause and a dependent clause. Look out, my friends. Next week we'll be talking independent clauses and dependent clauses and the three kinds of complex sentences. The dependent clause at the start, the dependent clause in the middle, and the dependent clause at the end with different usage of commas next week. All right, my friends. We urge you to buy 10 or 20 different copies of the book. Just buy a whole bunch and see if they're all exactly the same. If you want me in your backyard to give a conference, send me an email. Chris Biffle at WholeBrainTeaching.com We do. Scrap Bunny, what did your Kindle edition look like? Because I have a new cleaner Kindle edition coming up. Blizzard, I will sign yours at the conference. Who's coming to the conference? 
Daisy D, bless your soul. One of the, ex and Nancy, everyone's excited that Nancy's coming. The power picks are not in the book, but they're on the website. Let's look where the power picks are on the website. If you go here and you register under free ebooks, under general, you'll find power picks. Daisy, wait for about 24 hours before I do the program 553 week is on 